What's up, family? It's your favorite nonfiction and fiction storyteller, Matt D. Talford, also the host of Maddie's Rap, the show where we rap about things that guys rap about when we're hanging out in the sports bars, the gym, the barbershop, you name it. Uh, you're probably going to see some guys rapping about it or hear some guys rapping about it. But in our next uh, upcoming edition of Maddie's Rap, we're going to be breaking down a passage of scripture. And yes, uh, you know, at Maddie's Rap at the barbershop, we talk about the barbershop, the sports bar, the, the parking lot at the gym, whatever. We do talk about subjects uh, like sports, uh, women, social issues, money, jobs, technology, cars, and we do talk about spiritual topics. So uh, in this upcoming edition of Maddie's Rap, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite passages of scripture. It comes from the book of Matthew in the King James Version, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. If you saw my Facebook post or my Instagram post, you know. So stay tuned for that episode. It'll be coming up in just a few. What's up, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Maddie's Rap, the show where we rap about things that guys rap about when we're hanging out in the barbershop, sports bar, the gym, you name it. These are topics such as sports, uh, women, social issues, money, jobs, electronics, uh, you name it, we talk about it. Uh, and about that, before I get into uh, what we'll be talking about in this brief episode, I want to just let you guys know the direction that Maddie's Rap is going to be heading in in the upcoming episodes and for the foreseeable future. As you guys know, I've been doing these uh, Sunday editions of Maddie's Rap where we tend to talk about spiritual things or, or things that are social in nature or whatnot. And I got to tell you, there's been a strong pull on me to to do a little bit more with that. So uh, moving forward, uh, we're still going to continue to do the fun stuff. Uh, things like you see me and Brian going at each other about the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants and different sports and athletes and such. We're, we're going to continue to do those things, but I have to tell you that uh, the direction I'm going to be going in here is I'm going to be spending a lot more time talking about uh, spiritual things. And to, to be a little bit more specific, uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more, uh, well, let me just say it, I'm going to be spending a lot more time on deciphering scripture, deciphering scripture. Why deciphering scripture? Well, because to be honest, uh, and some, this may make some of you unhappy, uh, some of you may be, some of you may get mad about this or whatever, but remember uh, what you see there, if you're watching this on Facebook, what you see in my cover photo, no righteous man has ever been offended by truth. If the truth offends you, examine your heart. So all I do is speak truth. And a lot of you are not getting what you need to hear on Sunday morning. So uh, with that said, I just wanted to make that announcement. I am going to be moving more uh, into a spiritual direction and more. Uh, actually, like I said, this is going to be I'm going to be spending a lot more time deciphering the scripture because a lot of us read scripture. A lot of us hear sermons on Sunday and and you know we don't really understand the scripture that's being read from and and to be quite honest with you a lot of the pastors aren't doing their jobs they're not so uh and the and the age and the day is getting late there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the world uh and and we're so caught up on what's going on in this country and you know politics and sports and 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 what celebrities dating who and who had a birthday that we're missing the things that aren't being reported on and so I'm going to be touching a lot more on those things. But for now, let me get on to the topic that I gave you guys a preview on. And that was um, breaking down the passage of scripture from the book of Matthew uh, chapter, I believe it's five, verse 13, where, where it's written, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast down and trodden under foot of men. All right, so I asked you guys if you're watching this on Facebook, and, and while I'm on this, let me say this really quick to get this out of the way. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button on this video if you like it, and uh, please subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel so that I can give, provide you guys more of, of what I'm delivering today and what's gonna be coming. So that being said, uh, let me get back to that. The question I posed to my Facebook followers when I gave them the preview of this edition of Maddie's Rap was, who was the Messiah talking to when he said, ye are the salt of the earth? 
Now, also said in that same Facebook post that uh, I like, oh, and if you're watching this on Facebook, last, last interruption, if you're watching this on Facebook, please follow me on YouTube. Please go to my YouTube channel. Just open up YouTube and type in Matt Talford, and that'll be my channel. Please subscribe because, to be honest with you, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on Facebook. Uh, I, I like Facebook, uh, and then there are times that I don't like it. But uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube is pretty much a constant. So you guys, please, if you're watching this on Facebook, please open up the, your YouTube app on your phone or go to the YouTube website on your browser. Type in Matt Talford and subscribe to my channel. Now, that being said, I got some crazy lighting going on here. That being said, let's get back to the scripture. Matthew 5 and 13, ye are the salt of the earth. Who was the Messiah talking to when he said ye? That was the question I posed to my followers on Facebook. And, uh, you know, I didn't get any answers. I don't know if that's because Facebook didn't show the post to a lot of people. We, that's one of the reasons why I tell you to sub subscribe to my YouTube channel because Facebook's got some funky things going on with its algorithms. And to be quite certain, I mean, to be quite honest, when they bought out Instagram, they started putting those same algorithms at play on Instagram. So uh, the stuff that you think that people are seeing, you're, you're lucky if you get 5 to 10% people seeing it. So... Um, that that is why I don't know you know how much more I'm gonna be on Facebook or whatever so please subscribe to uh, my channel Matt Talford now that was the last interruption back to the scripture I posed the question who was the Messiah talking to when he said ye are the salt of the earth okay now to to get a clue there the clue is actually at the end of that verse it says the salt if, if the salt has lost its ability to do what it does salt does two things it preserves and it seasons it flavors okay so if the salt has lost its ability to do what it does it is thenceforth meaning from that point forward good for nothing but to be cast down and trodden under foot of men so i asked the question who was the ye or who was the you that he was speaking to now if you take the end of that it says it is then he said you are the salt i love metaphors so he the, the his audience he was referring to as salt okay so he said if that audience has lost his ability to do what it, it was created to do it's good for nothing but to be cast down and trodden under the foot of men now to answer the question of who was he talking to if if it's not clear to you or if it's not evident look at where he was okay he was in israel and if you understand the history of of what was going on in israel at the time that he walked through the 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 uh the the, the roads and the towns and whatever uh, the villages whatever if you look at what was going on what was going on is that israel was no longer under its own control it was being controlled by the romans and the romans took over israel um they they, they took over the city of jerusalem somewhere around 63 bc so it it wasn't long before his his birth maybe it was uh i don't know one generation or so before his birth that the romans took it over so israel was no longer under its own control it was being controlled by the romans so He's talking to a group of people that are pretty much were trodden down under the foot of men. Now, I challenge you that those same people are, that, that same salt is still being cast down and trodden under foot of men today. So put your thinking caps on and, and ask yourself, geez, uh, well, let's, let's look across the different uh, ethnic groups in the world and uh, let's try to figure out who's pretty much uh, treated like they're the lowest of the low cast down and trodden under foot of men at that time the people he was talking to were the israelites okay and they were cast down and trodden under foot of men now you have to know who the israelites were if you don't know who the israelites were you perhaps need to do a little bit more research and i, I would challenge that you start with the book of deuteronomy read deuteronomy the 28th chapter okay and that'll that is a clue for you right there that is a clue for you so now you might if for those of you that said all oh, he's talking to christians or whatever there was no christianity then so how is he talking to christians christianity did not exist christianity was a religion if you will that was created by uh which roman emperor was it i can't remember somebody helped me i think it was emperor constantine that created christianity prior to constantine there was no such thing as christianity okay there were the israelites and there was the law <laughs> there were the israelites and there was the law and 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 their practice of the law they're, they're keeping the law okay so that's why i don't like the word religion really to be honest with you because that wasn't a religion it was like okay these are the rules and it, it, to that to that end if you don't know what the bible is the bible is very simple it's three things it is number one 
it is history, okay? Uh, and the sad part is the, 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 the history part of the Bible has been so disconnected from world history that the Bible is treated like it's a religious book, when in actuality, it is simply a history book, it is a code of conduct, and it is a book of prophecy. Now, if you don't believe it's prophecy, I challenge you to go back again to Deuteronomy 28. That is, uh, that Deuteronomy is one of the books of Moses. So the, 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 that prophecy from Deuteronomy, uh, the 28th chapter, was delivered a long time before it started being enacted. Now, I don't want to play spoiler, but I'll play spoiler. The first 14 verses in Deuter Deuteronomy 28 has 68 verses. The first 14 verses in Deuteronomy 28 are the promises of the blessings to the, ch the children of Israel for their obedience to uh, to, to the Most High's commandments, okay? Some of you say, God, I'll, I'll save that for another uh, Maddie's Rap episode, okay? Um, or another episode of uh, Deciphering Scripture, okay? So some of you say, God, I'll say it for this, for those of you that don't understand the Most High, whatever, okay? So the first 14 verses were the promises that God said, I will give to the children of you, the children of Israel, if you obey me and hearken to my commandments. From verse 15 through 68 are the curses that he promised he would give to you, the children of Israel, for the disobedience to and, and failure to hearken to his commandments and his precepts. Now, that, again, remember, that Deuteronomy is one of the books of Moses, so that happened a long time before Christ. That happened a long time. That, that, that prophecy happened, or that prophecy was delivered. Those promises were delivered a long time before the, the, the advent of Christ or the creation of Christianity, okay? It was, it was delivered a long time before that. So, now, if you don't believe it's a book of prophecy, just read uh, verses, <laughs> read, start, start at Deuteronomy 28 and 15 and read through the end of the chapter. And I promise you those things happened, okay? Uh, somewhere around the 40th, uh, 45th, somewhere around, somewhere between first verses uh, 40 and about verse 60 were the things that, actually happened during the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Okay? Those are, that part of the prophecy happened. Okay? Verse 68 happened. Okay? This shirt right here, 400 years. 1619 through 2019. Okay, 1619 actually, um, and by some accounts it happened before then, but we'll deal with 1619 because that's when the first documented arrival of, of quote-unquote African slaves to, we know they're Israelites. If you're, if you're, if you're if your eyes are open and you understand what you're reading in scripture, you know that those slaves brought over in 1619 were Israelites. They weren't Africans per se, okay? Because Israelite, you know, I'll save that for another, save that for another edition. But <laughs> for argument's sake, for those of you that's not ready for that yet, the first African slaves were brought over in 1619, okay? Um, so that was the fulfillment of verse 68 of, ver of uh, chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. You'll be carried to Egypt again in ships, and you'll be sold as bondmen and bondwomen, or slave men and slave men, women, and no man shall buy you. Okay, so what that means is in the olden days, when someone was captured for whatever reason and put to, to work as a slave for whatever reason, they, 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 there was a, a, an understanding that somebody could come along and quote unquote pay your ransom, almost like bailing you out of slavery. They could, hey, what's the price to take this person out of your servitude? Oh, here's my price. Boom, here, okay, I'm paying you your price. This person is now free. Hey, go back to your homeland, okay? But one of the, but that promise in verse 68 was, you'll be sold as bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So, to take this back and to wrap this up, because I didn't mean for this to go this long, but I did a lot of pre-explanation of things and how we're going to be moving forward with Maddie's rap. To wrap this up in chapter 5 of the book of Matthew verse 13 where he says ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its savor it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast down and trodden under foot of men he was talking to the Israelites okay now your homework assignment if you don't know who the Israelites are read Deuteronomy 28 okay and you can also read Leviticus 26 okay and there's more scripture that that explains why the people who are Israelites today, who are modern day Israelites that don't know they're Israelites, there's more scripture that explains the reason why you don't even know you're an Israelite, okay? Now, why, why are you doing this, Matt? Somebody might say, Matt, why are you doing this? What, why is this important? It's important because there's a lot of 
Bible prophecy unfolding right now. Uh, a lot of it in 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 um in the book of Revelation, and we'll talk about that too. But guys, look, the 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 day is the day is getting late, and and people who are spiritually in tune they understand that there's been a shift. There's been an atmospheric shift. They understand this, and so there's no time to be playing games or or worrying about whose feelings get hurt or worrying about some pastor getting mad because I'm saying that they're not doing a job when. I asked a question on Facebook uh, uh, some weeks ago. I said, uh, if, or I, I made a statement. I said, if you're, I, I said to my African American pastors, if your parishioners, if your so-called black parishioners think that they're still think that they're Gentiles here in 2019, then you're not doing your job. Why is it important that these people know who they are? Because uh, there's a lot of stuff that these people, our people, have been suffering, and it, it, uh, this is the season where. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters are waking up right and left and you have to you have to know who you are you have to know who you are this whole thing of um you know people when when people don't have an identity and they don't have a homeland per se they can be treated any kind of way and i'm not gonna get all into the media and what's been happening and everything like that because everybody's not responsible for this and all of that and and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna wrap this up right now because I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, feeling a lot of different types of ways about this. So if you got any comments, please leave them in the. Uh, if you got anything to say or any comments, questions, whatever, please leave them in the comments below. Whether you're on Facebook or you're on or you're on uh, YouTube watching this. And guys, uh, I know that uh, earlier in the year I said follow me on YouTube if you're watching this on Facebook, because um, uh, I'm I'm not going to be uh, doing much uh, of my video stuff on Facebook, but I see the need for it because there's so many people still running around here lost. And when you realize who you are, your entire life will change. I promise you that. Your entire life will change. When you realize who you are, and when you realize who your ancestors were that came across and changed, your whole life will change. Who your ancestors were that were actually already occupying the, the land that is now known as America or North America prior to the, the arrival of Columbus, when you realize who they were, are, were, are, your whole life will change. So it's time to wake up and pull the veil off off, uh, off your eyes. And the scripture even talks about <laughs> blindness. Actually, you know what, I'm not gonna do it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop it right here because I didn't want it to go this long. Guys, listen, you got any questions, hit me up. This is uh, this has been a, uh, for, for Maddie's Rap. This is your host, Matt D. Talford. I'm an author. Check out my work in the uh, description if you're on YouTube. If you follow me on Facebook, you know how to how to get my stuff. If you have, if you don't know by now, please send me a direct message. Uh, Facebook for some reason doesn't like when you put links uh, to external sites and such. Their algorithms catch so much of that stuff. So I'm just so perturbed with Facebook, but it's like the number one social media platform. So you, it's it's hard to get away from. So anyway, guys, listen. I know this is heavy for for a lot of you, but I promise you, I've been studying this stuff now for 20 years, and I've I've been studying scripture since I was a little boy. But this this whole who are the Israelites stuff? I've been studying that for 20 years. So you can't, no, nobody can shake me on that. Uh, anybody that's been to seminary, you want to argue that point or debate it, let's go. Let's go. And, I, and I'll do it all in the spirit of love. Anyway, I could go on, but I'm going to wrap it up. For Maddie's Rap, this is your host, Matt T. Talford. Oh, and if you want this shirt, hit me up. You know how to get it. 400 years, 1619, 2019. Got one for you. Peace.